Jared trying to cheat, Calais. Boy, Jared, quit cheating, man. Hey, I guess if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying to hunt Jared. Yeah, I wouldn't have lost to the Cowboys if I was cheating. Boo! All right, I'm sorry. I'm shooting. I'm shooting. I'm shooting, <laughs> I'm okay, shooting shots. Ahead, I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm shooting them. Hey, hey, man, if you was cheating, you'd be in the NFL. Mm. Been talking about it all. Oh, Ooh. boy. Woo-hoo. You're lucky I ain't going to do it on the show. You're lucky. You better thank Yahoo. You better thank Yahoo Sports. What's up, guys? Welcome into The Spin. I'm Josh Barnes, alongside Jared Quay. Yep. And of course, the man of the hour himself, Jacksonville Jaguars, Clays Campbell. What's up? What's up, man? Heck, leave okay. I'm living a dream. You just, living you, a dream. You just strong today, flexing on them haters. <laughs> Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. I love it. Let's yeah. let's let, let's dive into it, Clays. It, it was a rough one. It was a, it was a rough week. You were in Dallas. Go ahead, just kick it to me straight, man. What happened? What happened? Hey, man, I'm gonna tell you like this. This is one of them days that a man goes through. <laughs> When he angry inside. <laughs> is that a Monica song? You, you know you got beat when your response is a Monica lyrics. <laughs> Did you sing a Monica song? Oh. In our real talk, though, man, uh, there ain't no really excuse. I mean, we had a lot of miscommunications. We didn't play good at all. Uh, you know, and they capitalized. They came to play. They played desperate. They needed to win. They've been playing good at home. And, uh, man, they just beat us. It was an old-fashioned butt whipping. You know, you can't say it no other way than that. You know, uh, and, you know, you can sit here and try to figure out exactly what happened and analyze that. At the end of the day, man, I'm putting it behind me. I'm moving on to the Houston Texans. Uh, I have, I mean, I have, you know, no reason, you know, uh, just it wasn't good enough. You know, they were a better team that day. Take your hat off to them. I got to tip my hat. Dak Prescott, Zeke Elliott, they came to play. Cole Beasley, you know, he came out and balled. You know, um, the defense played great. Uh, they played like a team that had something to prove, and they, and they went out there and earned it. You know, and now we have to go back and uh, go to the drawing board and, uh, and regroup and, you know, uh, go back to the basics, man. I feel like everybody was pressing, trying to do too much. Uh, and at the end of the day, man, I feel like if we just all do our job as hard as we can, we'll be just fine. I would just say, I started Ezekiel Elliott in fantasy. He balled, so I don't know if I should start the players playing against y'all or what. I, I'm sorry, look here. Fantasy football has weight and priorities in life. <laughs> what, it's, so it's like, it's like it's blood, family, it's family, fantasy. It's family. <laughs> Fantasy regular football. <laughs> hey, Josh. What's up? You, you ever saw Jerry get beat up? No. It ain't happening in a day. Yes, I do. It ain't happening in a day. I want to. It ain't. Yeah, look. We'll, we'll, we'll move hey, on. Josh. We'll, what's up? Hey, man. How much did it cost me for you to whip Jared up before the live te- television? Seven dollars. Bro, seven dollars. Set the bit on me right problem. now. I got Set the bout. Go ahead. Look here. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Where Dana White at? Dana White set the bout. <laughs> I ain't scared. Look at David beat Goliath. I can beat Goliath. Uh, I'm talking about Josh. Yeah, he's talking about fighting me, bro. Like in studio, in front of camera, me and you, mano y mano. Oh, he <laughs> I ain't fighting Josh. Because he's I, smart. I'll be with you. Because he's smart. <laughs> We're going to move on. Yeah, nah, I'm going to be honest with you. I was so mad at Cole Beasley. I almost bought his rap album just to break it, man. I don't know who that Cole Beasley was. I was like, that must have been Adam Thielen in a Cole Beasley jersey because that didn't make sense what he was doing. But I see your response. <laughs> but Cole Beasley got bars, bro. Okay. Have you heard his song? <laughs> his album was hot. His album was hot. Okay. Yo, he, it's hard right now. He drops a fresh album. Everybody likes it. Comes out in balls, man. Hey, man. Nah, Cole Beasley was not even on nobody's fantasy roster before that game. Cole Beasley's never won on the waiver wire because of what he did to the Jaguars. And I will say this, though. It ain't like Cole Beasley just came out of nowhere. He's been a good player in this league for a couple years. He's had some good games. He just hasn't been around that much. I don't know if he's been hurt. I don't know what it was. But the man, the man's back. You know what I think it was, Josh? I think Cole Beasley was looking at that Jerry Jones interview like, we ain't had a number one receiver in years. And he was like, say no more, yeah, Jerry. Say no more, fam. <laughs> say no <laughs> more. Number one coming up. So moving on, there are some news that came out this week with Josh Norman having an issue last Monday night against the Saints. During halftime, Jay Gruden ripped the headphones out of his ear, which apparently is normal for him to listen to music at halftime. So, Calais, just tell me what that's like at halftime, if that's, like, unusual. Do coaches do that? How do, how do players respond to that? I'm going to tell you, I don't really see people listening to music at halftime. Now, before a game, you listen to music, but at halftime, nobody really puts their headphones on. So that's kind of different for me. Uh, at the same time, when coach is talking, you definitely want to give him your attention. But there's, there's, there's boundaries, you know. I don't think a coach should ever snatch something from a grown man. Like, that's a, that's a tough, you know, it's balanced. But at the same time, no, he should give him his respect. I feel like there's a problem uh, with respect when he doesn't do that. I think it's Lil Wayne's fault. 
Mm. Lil Wayne just dropped the Carter Five, and you're not just gonna not listen to the Carter Five at halftime. Like, I, I get it, the game's being played. Like, all right, I'll take my headphones off. But they're talking about a halftime speech. I mean, Jay Gruden ain't Al Pacino any given Sunday. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he's not giving this speech about inches. The six <laughs> inches in front of your face. He spit on his lip. When he said that. <laughs> listen, he makes fifteen million dollars a year. You can wait till after the game to listen to Lil Wayne. I'm gonna tell you right now, though, if if uh, if I'm in that locker room, though, Coach would have to have snatched the headphones off his ear. I feel like that would have been a conversation that already had happened, and he would be, you know, uh, locked in and focused in the group. Even even when you lose, you're gonna win or lose together. We ain't gonna separate and go off on our own and listen to headphones, you know. And I don't even know if they want to lose. I just know that. Uh, no matter what happens, you know, when coach is talking, we're going to all be present. I'm not saying he lost the team, because I don't know, I'm not there. But it's hard to have guys who have egos and, uh, and who uh, don't want to put the team first. It's a sign that they don't respect the coach. So t- that tells me that Josh Roman don't respect his coach. And if he doesn't respect the coach, he can't be the only person in the locker room. And that's tough. So I don't know if Jay Gruden has to, uh, you know, I mean, he has to have a heart-to-heart with him and figure that one out because he's one of your star players. And if he don't respect you, then nobody will. So, Kalash, you say as a team, you guys got to band together. And I know you guys, like, all have a bunker mentality. How does information like that even get out of the locker room? Exactly. You know, I don't know. Because that's something that should not get out. That should be in closed doors. You know, there's issues. People, are, if, well, we like to say, we family. And families fight. As you know, I was just about to beat Jared up. or pay you to beat Jared up. Families fight. Yeah. You know, that's part of that's a part of life. And so we're going to have our issues, but it stays in house. You know, the whole world will need to know about us fighting. So I think that, you know, something's going on wrong over there. But at the same time, though, know, uh, they'll figure it out because that's what families do. If, they, if they're if they going to band together and become a team that they need to come to have a chance, they have to come together. They have to be able to put all that behind them. But if not, then, you know, something's going to change. Usually the player is going to leave or the coach is going to leave. It's just how it goes. Yeah. So going from disrespect to inside, more disrespect. Yeah, inside the locker room disrespect to disrespect on the field, Tyreek Hill scored a touchdown for the Chiefs against the Patriots, and a fan apparently threw a beer in his face. Calais, what do you do? Or have you ever had an experience like that where people are like throwing stuff at you? I mean, way back in the way back, I guess the Eagles game, uh, like when I was like maybe my second year or third year in the league. But it wasn't even like that. Like, I mean, you literally threw a beer in my man's face. That's that's so disrespectful. And I don't even understand, you know, like you come into a, a game to you pay hard your hard money to watch this man play the game. You can't disrespect him like that. That's you know, you don't deserve to be in the in the stands no more, man. I I, I know that I heard they said they uh he won't be coming back to, or whoever it was won't be coming back to the uh, any more uh Patriots games. But he has to have a lifetime ban for that. I mean, I know people make mistakes. You know, even if it was accidental, maybe you got to a side or something, or maybe I don't know. But that was purposely done. You gotta get him out of there. He don't belong. <laughs> nah, in that was yeah, full, accidental. That was a full extension of the wrist, and he kind of shook it as he got it to the end. Mm. He got all mm. of the beer out. Mm. I'm gonna tell you why I'm hot for three reasons. All right. Let's hear. All right, I'm hot for number one that Tyreek Hill didn't get to do his end zone celebration because mm-hmm. you know it was coming fire. He just scored a 70-yard touchdown. He had an end zone celebration. Um, I'm hot for number two is that this dude had tickets to be close enough to, like, he was, like, damn near, I mean, the equivalent to what courtside is in basketball on that football field, and yet you have that much money, but you don't have the class to at least kindly give him a beer instead of throwing <laughs> a beer in his face. You don't know if he was thirsty or not. And then last but not least, Tyreek Hill's discipline to not choke that fan out like hey, Latrell Sprewell. You I mean, can't be. <laughs> like, like, I'm right on, no, I'm telling you, if I was in that situation, you threw a beer at me, I don't know if I had the self-control to not hey, jump out talk. like Ron Artest. You see what happened Ron Artest? Yo, got a yeah, beer just thrown a, on him. It's a melee. I applaud my man because he's smart. And he it, it, he knew that him getting the stands would make it a lot worse. But, I mean, that takes a lot of restraint, man. Tyreek Hill, he has a, a, a great kind of discipline. That's why he's a good football player. Do you know how much a beer costs at a football game? I'll tell you exactly. How, I know how much it costs at Foxborough Stadium because I was there last year. It's thirteen dollars, and that's on discount. It was a Bud Light, dilly dilly. No advertisement there because he wasted it. But it, it's not a cheap thing. So for him to waste that, he had to be upset. Can I just get one more hot topic with this? You got, run with it. Your boy Nate Peterman, Claire's is back at it again, man. Nate P doing what Nate P does, baby. Throw interceptions and blow games. He's consistent. <laughs> he's, he's not going to be back. He's not. Hey, <laughs> he didn't hey. think that last time. 
Well, I mean, they say uh, uh, Josh Allen's uh, elbows hurt, so he might just be back. And uh, I really was hoping I was pulling for him because we could have we could have used that win against the Texans. That had been huge. But he did throw a touchdown at least. I mean, to the other team too. You know, he being fair, yeah. he was like, "Yo, I can't just throw one to my team. I'm in a touchdown giving mood." Did you see the pass they threw it on? I was like, "Yo, I could have threw that pass." I don't. I don't use <laughs> this. I don't use this word often. But I hate Nate Peterman. Damn. So I just he's he's not good headlines hey. and and I hate him. So speak, well, that's speak, a strong speak, word. Speak, you know, know, it's a very strong he word. He did nothing to you. It's man. a very strong word. I hate him. So speaking of hate, we're going to our new segment, Jared's favorite hashtag hate. So Calais, we scoured Twitter to find all the hate that we can find when people talk about you and the Jaguars, and so we just gonna let you know what people have to say. You can tell us what you think back in return. You re- this will be interesting. You, re- you ready for this? Yeah, bring it on. All right, from Demetrius82. My man Demetrius said, I never realized how slow Calais Campbell was until today. Hey, hold on, Dimitri. Hey, I'll, hey, hey, hey. I ain't got no to say to hey. <laughs> apparently, <laughs> apparently, Demetrius thought you, he thought, just like Eric Flowers, he thought you was a speed rusher. That is crazy. <laughs> Hey, but first of all, I can turn the corner. I can bend the edge. Second of all, if you want to come out here and play football, line up in front of me, we can see what's up. But tell <laughs> Ooh, all right, Demetrius, 82. That's much better. I, 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 I bet, like, I'd bet 100 bucks you could beat him in a foot race. He might be blazing fast. I don't know. But I tell you like now, hey, uh, I, football is my job. I love it. It's a great job. And I'm going to be the best thing I can at it. Every single time I'm on the football field, I'm going to get everything I got. If you want to come step on the football field with me, we can go go to battle. If not, enjoy being a fan. Perfect. Uh, next one. This is coming from someone you idolized as a child. Shannon Sharp, as you grew up a Broncos fan, said every quarterback Ramsey trashed in the GQ article would increase the Jags Super Bowl chances by 75 to 100% over Blake Bortles. Hey, Shannon Sharp is my guy, and I like him a lot. Uh, I think he's trying to sell papers, though. You know, he has to come up with these bold statements. You know, he's, that's what he does. He's a a TV uh, analyst, you know, so he has to come up with reasons that can, you know, or just come up with with, with storylines, headlines, you know, and that's a hey, good headline, I guess. He, he, I like Blake. He rocks with the Jags, I, though. He rocks with the Jaguars. You ever watch it? Skip Bayless be talking all that stuff, and he rock with the Jags. The reason why he tweeted that is because Skip Bayless, a Cowboys fan, and he was like, Jags finna dominate, and, you know, I ain't gonna get back into what happened, but obviously he had to tweet something to, you know, save his name. You're just, you're just defending Shannon Sharp now. I'm defending Shannon. <laughs> you're defending Shannon. You gotta oh, defend bitch. three people. You gotta defend Shannon Sharp, Colin Kaepernick, Barack Obama, and what Kanye West used to be. Oh, old Kanye. <laughs> yeah, old, not, you, you don't defend new Kanye. You gotta defend Can't Polo defend Kanye. Kanye. Polo Kanye is forever. He's hard. That's in your hearts forever. All right, Clay, so we got one more for you. It's from Obey the Boss underscore underscore, because Obey the Boss was taken. Uh, he said, Calais Campbell plays for the Jaguars? Could have effing fooled me. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good one. It's a good hate. It's a good one. It's a good hate. I mean, that's kind of funny, though, because, um, I mean, I had my best uh, best year of my career last year uh, with the Jaguars. I'm just curious uh, what I mean. That just doesn't make sense to me, but okay. All right. All right. And our last one, and this is a good one. This says, this... Oh, wait, that's a typo. This says, that Calais Campbell guy is pretty good. And that is from Jared Quay. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I did say that. I did say that. Hey, man, Jared, first of all, pretty good. Pretty good? That's all you can say about me? Pretty good? Come on, man. Don't do me like that. Hey, let's not get good. ahead of ourselves, all right? Once you get that sacks, once you become the leader in sacks in the league, then you become is really good, but right now you're pretty good, all right? You're getting to the quarterback, you're getting sacks, and that's what you need to do, all right? So you're pretty good. I uh, read the win some games, and this is, it starts this week, man. So, you know, whatever we got to do, bro. But, hey, but hey, but I will say this. I feel it coming, you know? I, I've been playing okay, not great, just okay, below the level of my standard. And I'm looking forward, because I'm starting to feel my zone. I'm starting to get that, 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 that feeling inside where I'm about to dominate. Just wait. Mm. I think losing brings out the best of me because I know how good we are. And we're not playing the way we can. So I feel like it's going to bring the best out of me. I, I just feel inside. Well, Clay, No, no, you see that? So, it, it was my tweet and all them tweets about all that hating stuff. It was mine. He was pretty good that made him angry like that. <laughs> Use that to fire you. Take it up on your de- locker and make sure that you tap pretty every time you go out there and play. And you ball out <laughs> for me. 
So, Calais, before you win next week, you got to win here today, right? So we're having sibling rivalry. I know you want to beat Jared, and you can't do it because you're Skyping in, so we're going to let you do it from there. The baseball playoffs are in full swing, right? So what we're doing is we're going to give you baseball terms and see which ones you get right. We're going to have a counter saying Jared's right or Calais is right. Oh, this is easy. Oh, ooh. Ooh. I'm going to tell you right now. The, the you're Jared not gonna study, if Jared, only, only way Jared beats me is if you study, because I know good and damn well I know more baseball than Jared does. Okay. Well, All right. No. <laughs> okay, I was going to give it to yeah, him. I'm going to hold back. Yeah. I'm going to wait. Jared didn't study. Jared didn't see these beforehand. I made sure of it. And I don't know a damn thing about baseball, but I'm competitive. <laughs> and, and it's multiple choice. So you have like a 33% <laughs> chance to get it right regardless. All right. We're going to start with uh, number one. What is a can of corn? You get a concession corn, fly ball, or an easy strike. Easy strike. I don't want to go with easy strike because he will easy strike. But what, what if he's right? I think it's easy strike. The answer is fly ball. A can of corn oh. is when the ball just pops up and is easy to catch. It's a can of easy corn. Easy catch. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah easy strike doesn't make no sense. Oh, yeah, no yeah, yeah I, but I know I'm clear as can, but I know so much about baseball. Zero. Right, right, <laughs> zero. Right? Hey, you, had, you, had, you had a 50% chance if you just chose something different. I mean, I, mean, I, I, I think regardless, I, it's I'm about to say a can of corn is something you buy at the grocery store, man. Cream corn. All right, all we'll, we'll move on. Uh, next one is plunked. It's A, a player's been hit with the ball, B, a player runs over a defender, or C, clipping the ball with a bat. I'm going to go with getting hit by the ball. I'm going to go with hitting the ball, C, hitting the ball with a piece, the piece of the bat. It is A, player being hit with the ball. All right, I got the last one. We're doing, it's called a Texas leaguer. A, a short throw. That's illegal on this show. <laughs> B, uh, the ball falls between an outfielder and an infielder for a single. Or C, a broken bat. Jared, I see you trying to cheat over here. Jared trying to cheat, Calais. Boy, Jared, quit cheating, man. Hey, I guess if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying to hunt Jared. Yeah, I wouldn't have lost to the Cowboys if I was cheating. Boo! All right, I'm sorry. I'm shooting. I'm shooting (laughs) shooting shots. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm shooting them. Hey, hey, man, if you was cheating, you'd be in the NFL. Mm. They're talking about it all. Oh, boy. You're lucky I ain't going to do it on the show. You're lucky you better thank Yahoo. You better thank Yahoo Sports. All right, let's just finish this awesome trivia. Uh, a Texas leaguer, a short throw, a ball falls between an outfielder and an infielder for a single, or C, a broken bat. I'm going to take B. I'm going to go with B to B. It is B. You guys, I, I don't I know who that. won. I, I have I no idea. I won. You know oh, won. You know won. Hercules. 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 Hey, 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 Jared. Hey, I'm sorry, Jared. This is the way God made me, bro. I'm a competitor, but I'm a winner. I am a winner. Oh, really? Well, that was a good segue to the next segment because you did lose the Blake Borders Challenge. Ain't that right? Oh, yeah. Blake Borders Challenge. Would he get over 82 and a half? Josh, what his quarterback rating was? 70.2. And I think that is that below uh, 82 and a half? Yeah. Let me do the math. So it sounds okay. like you owe somebody some Venmo. It's okay because we're going to run it back. We're going to run it back. Hold on this. first. You got to pay. Hold on. Ready, ready, ready. Hold on to hear it out. All right. You got to pay Venmo. And since nobody commented on the Yahoo Sports link comments for the Venmo, the money's going to go to our producer, Keith. All right. You got to Venmo <laughs> Keith. <laughs> and so next time, you, you better comment and get your money. I got bailed out. Ain't nobody pay. I'm going to keep my money. Well, I'm going to tell you what. This is next week. You ready for the Black Borders Challenge? <laughs> mm-hmm. This is what the next week challenge is, all right? Over 82 and a half. Under 82 and a half. Loser. Got to sing Whitney Houston, I Will Always Love You. At least 10 seconds of the song. Bro, hey, you better start practicing. Your, you better warm up. Practice your vocals. Because you about to be singing, bro. Well, you going to go viral. I'm going to tell you right. If you singing, you going to go viral. Are you going viral? Because Blake Borders about to get off this week. I don't see this as a duet, so I would just like volunteer you as tribute. Nah, nah we're gonna, we gonna sing together <laughs> see too. This. What, oh, you just assuming we gonna lose? I'm hoping yes. we lose. I'm a Jaguars <laughs> fan. I'm hoping we lose. So Houston Texans coming to town. Kind of hot. Just came off of a, a couple wins. What What do you guys got to do? What What's the step? How do you bounce back? Yeah, I, all I know is, man, we are gonna get back to work. We are gonna practice hard. We go out here and have some fun on this football field. Hey, man, you know, the Houston Texans are a good team to have right now, and I'm looking forward to the matchup. You know, I know as a, as a, as a, just an older vet in this league who's been down before, 
you know, uh, it just it builds character in these in these moments. Hopefully, that character is what we need to take us where we want to go. Clay, so I don't know if you saw. There was a picture of you getting a sack this week. You get sacks. It's your fourth of the season. Sack and Dak Prescott. But my man was smiling while you were tackling him. So we gonna have like a little caption off between the three of us. Since Jared's the, the jokester, Jared gets to go first. Do you have caption for Calais sacking Dash, Pr Dak Prescott and him smiling while he was doing it? Uh, yeah, my caption is, life's a breeze when you win about 33. <laughs> At that point in time in the game, it was 0-0, zero, zero, <laughs> just so you know. Oh, ooh, Calais, no, Calais uh, is very familiar well, Let me change my caption. <laughs> it's like when he, when, he, when he gentle, when he's sacking you, but he gentle. Charmin, hashtag Charmin. <laughs> he out there trying to get them, get them endorsing. <laughs> you know he is. You know he is. Real talk. He he know we can't uh, really hit him no more, so he get to just enjoy these nice soft sacks. Uh, so it was a soft sack. Nah, I mean I still try to make him feel a little bit, but I mean through the rules, you got to wrap and roll. You know you get swing a guy. It's like a ride yeah. now. They, 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 the NFL gave you a tutorial. It's like how not to get flagged when tackling, and it's like you take softly grab him by the shoulder pads. And then kind of tug twice softly and then ease him down. It just show us all the penalties that you get when you do hit them uh, the wrong way. And so you kind of just learn, like, I ain't trying to get flagged. You got to just, you know, you got to you know, wrap and roll. We call it a jag roll. It's the only thing we can do these days. Calais, what was Dak Prescott thinking when you were sacking him? He was thinking, he don't know, but I, I, got, I drank Matt, uh, Michael's... <laughs> See, you, you I got one here. I'm going to help him out. Clay, this is a caption for you. This is a caption for you. Go. Just be like, hey, you should get a caption. If you're going to get sacked, make it by Calais Campbell. Ooh. Uh, that's a little weird, but okay. So, Clay, we want to wish you luck against the Texans this week. We hope you swap jerseys with Deshaun Watson or J.J. Watt makes sense. Hey, we'll take Will Fuller's jersey, baby. <laughs> yeah. Just give us anybody's. Um, we wish you the best <laughs> luck this week against the Texans. Swap a jersey, get a sack, ball out. And then we will see you right here next week on The Spin. We'll see you guys later.